Hello and welcome back to Start Learning Numbers. And as always, I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. In today's part 10, we will still talk about the rational numbers and we will see that they form a so-called field of numbers. You've already learned in the last video that the rational numbers are denoted by Q and that they are given by the set of all fractions. There, A can be any integer and B a non-zero integer. But most importantly, two fractions A over B and C over D are the same if and only if A multiplied with D is the same as C multiplied with B. Now, this is everything we need to define our two operations, multiplication and addition. So let's immediately start with the multiplication for two fractions. We first define the multiplication because the whole construction of the rational numbers had the multiplication in mind. Please remember, we wanted to find inverses. Therefore, this has to be similar to the construction of the integers where we had the addition in mind. Or in other words, we don't have any other choice than using the original multiplication in the numerator as well as in the denominator. Therefore, the new fraction that should come out here has a times c in the first component and b times d in the second component. And of course, everything works as always. Here we have the new multiplication and here the old multiplication. And it is also well defined, which means the outcome stays the same when you change the representation of the inputs. For the proof, I don't have to go into details because we already did this for the integers. For this reason, it might not surprise you that we now have indeed inverses with respect to the multiplication. Now, if a is not zero, we can just calculate a over b times b over a. And this gives us by definition a fraction where the numerator is the same as the denominator. Or in other words, this is the same as the fraction 1 over 1. Here you should see, this is indeed the identity element with respect to our new multiplication. Therefore, if we have a fraction a over b, the inverse is immediately given by b over a. Now you may remember the equation we had in the last video. 4 times x is equal to 1 was not solvable with integers. However, in the rational numbers q, we can rewrite this equation with fractions. And then of course, we are able to solve it with x is equal to 1 quarter. So you see, now we can solve even more equations. However, we also recognize the nice structure the rational numbers have. Now when we exclude the rational number we called 0, which simply means that the numerator is 0, then together with the multiplication we have something we called an abelian group. Please recall, this means we have for the multiplication the associative law, the commutative law, a neutral element and also all inverses. So you see, this is something new, this is what the integers didn't have. However, they also formed an abelian group with respect to the addition. Therefore, it would be nice to translate this also for the rational numbers. Hence the question now is, how do we define the addition operation for the rational numbers? Of course, we still want to conserve the rules we had for the integers, in particular the distributive law. Therefore, we can check what we need when we want to add two fractions with the same denominator. First, by the definition of the multiplication, we can rewrite the first part as the product of two fractions. And then of course, we can do the same for the second part. And there you see, we have the same number here and here, and the distributive law tells us we can factor it out. Now in the parentheses, you see the denominator 1. So essentially, we just have integers there. And of course, the new addition should be compatible with the addition for integers. So we have a plus c in the numerator here, and the multiplication gives us this result here. Therefore, the only reasonable definition for the addition when we have the same denominator is given by the result here on the right hand side. Otherwise, we wouldn't fulfill the calculation rules we actually want. Ok, and now we can look at the general case when we have two arbitrary fractions. In the first step, we can multiply the fraction a over b by the neutral element which can be written as d over d. And in the same way, we multiply the second fraction by b over b. 
Now using the definition of the multiplication again, we can split up the first part again into two fractions by using ones. And of course we want to do the same for the second part. So now you see, we can again factor out this number here when the distributive law holds. Okay, at this point we have the same argument as before. Essentially we have integers again and the addition should act as the old one. Therefore in the numerator we have a times d plus c times b and b times d in the denominator. Now in summary, this calculation explains why this definition is the only possible one for the addition such that all the calculation rules hold we want. Okay, then let's fix that with a definition. Now the explanation is given as always. Here on the left hand side we define the new symbol, the new addition, by using the old addition for the integers. And also we can check that the new addition is well defined. Of course this means the same as before. Changing the representative on the left does not change the result on the right. In addition, what shouldn't surprise you is that we have all the nice calculation rules, for example the associativity. Therefore, let's summarize everything we know in a nice proposition. The rational numbers, given as the set Q, together with the two operations, fulfill. First, they form an abelian group with respect to the addition. The same as we had for the integers. Secondly, we also know that we have an abelian group with respect to the multiplication as well, when we exclude zero. And of course, the last rule shouldn't surprise you, we have distributivity. That's the law that connects both operations. Now please note, having all these properties together is very nice. We can add, we can multiply, we can subtract, we can divide with the exception of zero and we can combine both operations. For this reason, when we have a structure like this, it gets a new name. We call it a field. However, it ends not here. The rational numbers have even more properties. For example, you can ask what happened to the order we had for the natural numbers. Hence, let's talk about this in the next video. I hope I see you there. Have a nice day. Bye.